For decades, Europe has implemented policies for young people, helping them to study, travel, find work, and yes, also to have a little fun along the way. Europe's flagship youth programme, Erasmus, was also one of the first. Launched in 1987, it gave students the support they needed to study in another European country, broadening their horizons, learning languages and making friends. In 1996, the idea for the European Voluntary Service was born. This would later become the EU Solidarity Corps. Plus que jamais, les jeunes sont nos meilleurs alliés pour construire l'Europe de demain. Mais ils ne le seront qu'à condition que l'Europe soit pour eux une réalité vivante. To recognize the important contributions made by young people across Europe, Parliament launched the Charlemagne Youth Prize in 2008. Since then, it's been awarded every year to projects that promote cooperation and understanding in Europe and beyond. Tackling unemployment and creating opportunities for Europe's young people was the goal of the 2013 Youth Guarantee. Nous ne devons pas accepter qu'un jeune puisse se retrouver sans emploi ou sortir du système de formation sans que dans les quatre mois qui viennent lui soit proposé une nouvelle formation, un enseignement, un apprentissage, un stage, un emploi. But work isn't everything. In 2014, the European Youth Event was born. Held at Parliament's home in Strasbourg, the goal was to celebrate European citizenship, debate ideas and meet like-minded people. It was clear by 2014 that Erasmus was a roaring success. So successful, in fact, participants had even become known as the Erasmus generation. Engaged, culturally aware and European. When the Commission proposed updating Erasmus to include other youth programmes, Parliament pushed for a wider scope and more investment. Erasmus Plus was born. How could young people be encouraged to explore the diversity of European cultures? That was the goal of Discover EU, launched in 2018. Nearly 70,000 18-year-olds were given interrail passes allowing them to travel the continent in their first year of adulthood. The scheme remains hugely popular today. So what about the EU of tomorrow? That's what the Conference on the Future of Europe is all about. The conversation involves Europeans of all ages, and a third of them are under the age of 25. This time, their conclusions, their proposals, will be taken into the Conference on the Future of Europe. From here starts a very important exercise, because these young people will say what their priorities are in European policies for the coming years.